Greetings all, it's Gerald Clark with you December 18th, 2017. Today's presentation I'm going to give to you is on the Russian Jews, Kazarian Mafia, and their possible connections with this New World Order business happening right before. So uh, the reason I'm focused on this is because a lot of people don't really know that much about Russia. Uh, and also, given the fact it's been in the headlines for <laughs> as the, the colluding agent that promoted President Trump to his position right now uh, as a witch hunt has been going on in the courts and such for, geez, the, the whole last year. So I thought it was time to take a look. Uh, and it just so happened to coincide with some family lineage research that I was doing. I have a genealogy table that was given to me by the family and I was looking into it. And, and, I, and, I, and for some reason, I, uh, the name Minsk uh, triggered me. And so I started looking into this because I realized it was kind of an important place relative to what happened with the peace agreement between Russia and Ukraine and the United States, uh, the, the, the peace accord that happened twice, I think, in Minsk. Anyway, um, let's, let me get you started. So my great-great-grandfather, Herschel Hyuten, was born in April 1956 in Starosol, just outside of Minsk, Russia. And he died 1911 in Denver, Colorado. So in 1891, this Hyuten clan, I guess that's just one in there, shouldn't have two, uh, migrated from Russia for the United States via Ellis Island, New York. And the immigration was somewhat forced out of a fear of reprisal from the Russian government, which was conducting what was called pogroms, it sounds like programs, in response to the Jewish occupants, uh, and there was a lot of turmoil. We'll go over that in a second. My mother was told stories that during the departure via ship, the Hayuten family was split into two groups to help ensure the survival in the event one of the ships sank. She reported the women hiding their valuables sewn into their dresses so as to have something to start over with in the new land. Today, Minsk is the capital of Belarus, uh, curious, uh, I looked into that name. It, it means white Russia, but they, they don't, they gave three different possible sources of where this came from, and I, none of them really kind of resonated with me, so I don't really know. <clears throat> First question that came up was, uh, why did the Jews leave Minsk? Uh, my, my, in particular, I started with my family and other areas of Russia circa 1891. Who was in power and what led to the conflict with the Jews there? And the second question is, what is the origin of the Jews in Eastern Europe in the first place, and especially Russia? Is there a Khazarian connection? And the reason I bring this up is uh, on the secret history of the Khazarian Mafia, written by veteran today Gordon Duff. I thought it was a great article, and it had some claims in there that I really wanted to look into because it crossed over with this research. Okay, Alexander II... Uh, or the third was in power from 1881 to 1894, which was the time that my great-great-grandfather Herschel Hayuten and his family left the Minsk area, Russia. And you can see this table below. Uh, I actually have the whole table and I might just show that to you. As a matter of fact, uh, let's get through this and I'll show you some pictures. Um, his successor, Nicholas II, was executed by the Bolsheviks during a revolution in 1917. And you know, and note that World War One started shortly thereafter. So let's just look at this real quick. Here's Alexander the um, Third. <clears throat> here he was the son of Alexander. So notice the family group: Holstein, Gottorp, Romanov, <laughs> the very first um, czar in Russia, or Kagan, if you want to call it, was a Romanov. So let's look at a few pictures before I get too far along on this. So uh, I first started with my great-great-grandmother. Her name, we called her Little Bubba. Her name was Elizabeth Lerner. And you can see right here, she has some of her data here uh, <clears throat> from early on. And, and this led to, this, I, this co corroborated with the genealogy table that I had. So here's Herschel here, born April 56 in Starosel, Russia. So uh, I had to go look up and see if I could find some pictures of it. My mom says this is Herschel and his wife Hannah here. And you can find this on the internet. It's funny, we called them Bubba and Zeta. That's, actually, we called my great my grandfather Bubba and Zeta, but that was apparently a title, not a name. I didn't know that for a long time. Anyway, um, here's um, Minsk here in Russia. And you can see that Starosol sits right out over in this area, right out here. Let's see, I had it right before. Let's see if it brings it in. Okay, yeah. So here's Starosel. <clears throat> this is the region where he lived, apparently, 
and he was born here in 1856 and, and left in 1891. <clears throat> and here's just a little bit on Belarus, uh, where I did some research to find out uh, some of the... I was trying to figure out what the name of the, the word Belarus meant, <laughs> really, but I, anyway, so it's, it turned out to mean something like white Russian when you look it up. Okay, um, I mentioned um, Gordon Duff's article, and I want to kind of go back to that a little bit and focus on this area that he was talking about between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Here's Russia up here. And this picture he had on his post was um, the Khazaria in the Caucasus where there was a mass conversion to Judaism in the 8th century. That's true. I looked that up. Um, <clears throat> now, these people may not have had a connection with ancient Israel the way he stated here, but I, I don't know. It's really hard to understand when they left uh, the Levant and actually ended up in these regions and they came from different places too. So anyway, this is what caused me to start looking into it. So let's open our document back up. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so I'm gonna try to answer these questions here. Uh, and in particular, why did they leave Minsk and uh, why was Minsk important and what, how did they end up in Russia, these Jew, Jewish people ended up in Russia in the first place, okay. So, let's go back to the Bolsheviks, Lenin, and Marx. And many people don't know anything about uh, the leaders of Russia and, and their history, uh, mostly because it's, a lot of it's been censored in the West relative to the Iron Curtain and all the things that went on with the Cold War since World War II. So, even when I was in the military, we were trained to be uh, against the communists of Russia. Well, check this out. The Bolsheviks literally mean one of the majority. So there was a faction of the Marxist Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, RSDLP, which split apart from the Menshevik faction at the Second Party Congress in 1903. So this, this party was a revolutionary socialist political party formed in 1898 in Minsk <laughs> to unite the various revolutionary org organizations of the Russian Empire into one party. So when I saw Marx in there, I was like, okay, well, we're going to have to obviously figure out what was going on with this. Why were the Social Democrats aligned with Marx? Okay. In the Second Party Congress, the vote, vote the Bolsheviks won on the majority of important issues, hence their name. Bolshe uh, Bolshevik means majority. They ultimately became the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Boom, right there. Okay, so whoever was behind this movement established communism in Russia, and I don't think it was native to Russia. You're going to see that. The Bolsheviks or Reds came to power in Russia during the October Revolution phase of the Russian Revolution in 1917 and founded the Russian Soviet Federation Federative Social Republic, with the Reds defeating the Whites and others during the Russian Civil War of 1917 and 1922. <clears throat> the RSFSR became the chief constituent of the Soviet Union in December 1922. And this kind of brings in... Uh, how Lenin fits in. So Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov, better known as the alias Lenin, uh, he was born 22 April 1870 to 21 January 1924. He was a Russian communist revolutionary politician and political theorist. He served, served as head of the government of the Soviet Russia from 1917 to 1924 and of the Soviet Union from 20, 1922 to 1924. Under his administration, Russia and then the wider Soviet Union became a one-party communist state <clears throat> governed by the Russian Communist Party. Ideologically, and this is a key point right here, a Marxist, okay, Lenin was a Marxist. He developed political theories known as Leninism. He was born to a wealthy middle-class family in Simbirsk. Lenin embraced revolutionary socialist politics during his following his brother's 19, or 1887 execution. He was expelled, check this out, from Kazan Imperial University, and I looked this up, this is one of the oldest universities in Russia, for participating in protests against the Russian Empire's Tsarist government. And he devoted the following years to a law degree. So remember, we're talking about Kazaria and Kazan, so this is quite interesting. But also the early rulers of um, Russia were considered Kagan, K-H-A-G-A-N, or Kazan. So Genghis Khan came from this name, the Kagan, or Kazan, okay. Or they derived it from him. 
Anyway, Lenin, Lenin moved to St. Petersburg in 1893 and became a senior Marxist activist, okay? In 1897, he was arrested for sedition and exiled to Shushinoyshka for three years where he married, uh, married this woman. <laughs> okay. Now, I've only had two cups of coffee. I don't think I have enough for a third pronunciation. After his exile, he moved to Western Europe, where he became a prominent theorist in the Marxist Russian Social Democratic Labor Party. Okay, you're probably wondering why all the, how does this fit to Kazaria and blah, blah, blah. You'll see in a minute. He took a key role in the RDSLP ideological split, leaving the Bolshe leading the Bolshevik faction against Julius Martov's Mensheviks. He encouraged insurrections during Russia's failed revolution in 1905. He later campaigned for the First World War to be transformed into a Europe-wide proletarian revolution, which, as a Marxist, he believed would cause the overthrow of capitalism and its replacement with socialism. So it's pretty important to understand this, uh, this part of the history. After the 1917 February Re Revolution ousted the Tsar and established a provisional government, Lenin returned to Russia to play a leading role in the October Revolution in which the Bolsheviks overthrew the new regime. <clears throat> okay. So they were a major organization, the Bolsheviks, consisting primarily of workers under a democratic inter internal hierarchy governed by the principles of democratic centralism, who considered themselves the leaders of the revolutionary working class of Russia. And the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party was, uh, I guess you consider it a revolutionary socialist party. It was formed in 1898 in Minsk to unite these various revolutionary organizations against the Russian Empire as one party. Okay, let's see. Let's go on to Karl Marx here. This, this is where, so Lenin was a astute follower of Karl Marx, so we have to understand what is it he believed that led to communism, okay? So Karl Marx's childhood and early education. He was born 1818, died 1836. I'm born May 5th, 1818 to Heinrich Marx, 1777 to 1838, and Henrietta Pressburg. 1788-1863. He was born at Bruckengasse 664 in Trier, a town then part of the Kingdom of Prussia, province of the Lower Rhine. Marx was ancestrally Jewish, check this out, as his maternal grandfather was a Dutch rabbi, while his paternal line had supplied Trier's rabbis since 1723. So the, the Jewish family married Jewish, okay, that's what he's saying. A role taken by his grandfather, Meyer Halev Marx, his father, as a child, was known as Herschel. Wow! <laughs> this is where my hair started standing up on end. My great-great-grandfather's name was Herschel. And according to what I understand, I have to look into this still, is he was a rabbi, so he was a priest, just like Marx's father or grandfather was. So does that mean they were the Levitical line? This is the part I haven't really pinned down yet, uh, even though I thought I had that, had that correct. Maybe somebody who was raised Jewish could tell me, because I don't know. <clears throat> and he was the first in line to receive a secular education and became a lawyer and lived relatively wealthy, middle-class existence with his family, owning a number of Moselle vineyards. Okay, this is in the Rhineland in Germany. Prior to his son's birth and escape to the constraint, escape the constraints of anti-Semitic legislation in Germany, Herschel converted from Judaism to Lutheranism, the main Protestant denomination in Germany and Prussia at the time, taking on the German forename, forename of Heinrich over the Yiddish name Herschel. Okay, is any more of this important? Um, okay, we already know this movement that led to the Bolshevik Revolution was based on Karl Marx's beliefs, which Lenin adopted. So, despite Russia's agrarian nature, the true revolutionary potential lay with the industrial working class. The RSDLP was illegal for most of its existence at the end of the First Party Congress in March 19, 1898. All nine delegates were arrested by the Imperial Russian police. 